Welcome everyone. I want to go over how to make a base ignition map uh, from scratch. So starting at completely nothing and we'll go through kind of the steps that I do to get something rough. So just as a general advice, you really only want to adjust ignition timing on a dyno or at the track because you can't really see the outcome of what that ignition timing is doing as far as power unless you're able to measure it. So typically you just put it on a dyno and then you make all of your changes there. Um, but you can get really close. A lot of internal combustion engines on gasoline, whatever fuel it be, they take similar amounts. Uh, that's pretty vague, but this will get you in the ballpark enough to put it on a dyno and then actually like measure it. So. With that out of the way, just know that this is a base. This isn't a uh, this isn't a one size fits all, but we'll we'll get you we'll get you close. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is scale the table. So in Max ECU, they make it pretty easy. You can just right click on the edge of the scale that you want to rescale, and uh, we're gonna do let's do three hundred kPa. So that's two bars of boost uh, so we'll go like that and then we're going to change the number of cells we'll give it 16 cells that's uh, pretty standard in the ecu world we're going to make sure this is all good we've got 800 to 700 or 7000 rpms and then we'll give it 16 cells as well just just for fun okay so 16 by 16 table starting at nothing so the very first thing you can do is take care of your idle and off idle areas. So a lot of engines you can just set to 10 degrees. It's like a pretty safe one. Sometimes uh, you can go like, you know, 15, whatever the engine kind of wants. Sometimes it wants a little bit more. And you're going to see this 3D representation as we build it out. So don't worry about the colors. Really, the colors are just a heat map of like low to high values. It's just telling you that there's a difference. It's more of just so your eyes can visually see if there's something wrong. Like if you just put like a random 100 in the middle of the map, uh, it would just stick out like a sore thumb. Oh, sorry. If you gave like a random like 30 or something, see it would stick out and you'd be able to notice, okay, there's an issue right there. So it's more of just a visualization. Um, all right, so we'll continue on. Um, let's just go just as a kind of a safety thing as well, up at the 300 until you get it on a dyno and you know what it's gonna do. Usually I'll just set like your highest boost value to like 10 degrees and then we can interpolate down from there. <clears throat> and then the next thing I do is take your like highest NA value and set it kind of like you would if you were setting a distributor. Like what's your max ignition angle? And like a lot of, a lot of engines this varies kind of greatly. Most of them it's anywhere from like if it's an efficient, like more modern cylinder head, some of the old Chevy V8s and stuff like a small block want like 30 plus degrees, but like, a, you know, a twin cam engine that's somewhat efficient, maybe it's gonna want 24 to 27 degrees. So just to be safe, let's just set it at 24. Now don't worry, we're just, we're just quadrant, you know, drawing out quadrants of this and we're gonna, we're gonna come in here and change this, okay? So you can just set your max timing value at NA like if you were just running no boost to 24. And then what you're gonna wanna do from here is pick your, uh, we're gonna taper down to this 10 degrees, but we're gonna wanna pick where your peak torque and your peak power values are. So uh, say on this engine, it makes like peak torque at 3,500. So what we can do is just focus on this row next and what you can do is set it to like 38 or 40 degrees um, down at the deceleration range. And we can just do that from there all the way to the end of the scale. So I'm just going like 38 like that. And then we can go right here at your where your peak torque value is and then go from the highest uh, val or sorry, the yeah, highest KPA value down to the lowest and then right click and hit interpolate. And this will give you like a rough curve. And then what you can do from here 
is just take these values, drag them over to where your idle is, right click, and then just hit interpolate horizontally. So that'll give you like a nice, like smooth curve uh, going up to your highest value where you're gonna be running the engine. And then the next from there, uh, say you want, say your peak power is at like 5,500 right here. Um, typically going from peak torque to peak power and then to the end, you're gonna gradually add just a little bit of timing. Um, so you can, you know, make sure you put it on a dyno and check it, but you could probably add about two degrees by your end here. So you can go like 27. Let's grab here. Let's go 27 and enter. Let's set these to 27 as well. And then we're just going to interpolate sideways again. So horizontal interpolate just like that. And that'll give you like a rough map that will work just fine. Um, you can, if you want to, you could start uh, where we haven't gone vertically interpolating and then kind of smooth this out a little bit, just like that. And uh, in these D cell areas, having a little bit more ignition advance, you have very little cylinder filling and uh, it needs actually a little more advance just to, to light off the charge. So that's why on deceleration in these high, low load, high RPM zones, um, the ignition timing, having a lot in there isn't gonna hurt anything. So let's go to the next one. So this is your 14 PSI of boost. So 200 KPA. And what I would tell you to do is just put in 14 over here. And then at your, yeah, 14 pounds, 14 degrees is kind of like a, just a generic safe bet that you can do. So just go put 14 in on this whole row. And then you can just vertically interpolate that um, from the top down like that. So you're just gradually taking out ignition advance until you put on a dyno and find out what it wants. And then what you can do here as well is do the same. So go from 14 down to your, to your uh, max value and then just interpolate vertically just like that. And then we've got this shelf here where we put 24. What we're gonna do there is we're just gonna go slightly above it. Um, yeah, just over to here, and then come down a couple rows to give it some room to interpolate and then do a vertical interpolate and we'll smooth that out. There's a little bump right here. You can click on it and see where that is. Um, but what we can also do is just grab from 10 all the way over and just smooth it out like that. And if we want, if this is, if this bothers you, we can take a little bit out here. You just drop this guy down just a touch. Um, just like that. Yeah. Cool. Then smooth it out again if you want it to be kind of perfectly smooth. Just for aesthetics, we'll do it that way. But this will give you like a really safe, workable way to add ignition timing from nothing. So if you're just building a base map, this is what you can do. 10 degrees down at idle. Uh, if you're doing anything boost, 14 pounds, 14 degrees is like a good safe just starting point. And then wherever your 100 kPa area is, whatever the like max timing that your factory engine would normally get, usually it's like 24 to 28 degrees, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, but you can kind of throw that in there and then just interpolate down to like 38 or 40 degrees um, on the deceleration and then interpolate up uh, to the top from your highest value up here, highest kPa value. Anyway, hopefully that made sense. Uh, just trying to help some people out that they have asked me questions in the past. Just thought I'd make a video on it so it can help more people out and you can see kind of how to roughly make one of these. So if you like this kind of content, feel free to like, subscribe, share, become a member, all that good stuff. Thank you.